Good evening, everyone. My name is John Narotko. I'm the principal of the Jordan Jackson School, and I want to welcome you to our virtual uh, third grade family transition meeting. I'm going to give everyone just a quick second to settle in um, while I just acknowledge, uh, I want to appreciate your time uh, this evening, and I acknowledge that these are definitely stressful and difficult times. Uh, we have a lot of questions to answer uh, as we move forward to the uh, next school year. And uh, hopefully some of you have had an opportunity to tune into the listening sessions from Superintendent Murphy, uh, as well as uh, the knowledge that we have a couple of working committees, the Return to School Safely Committee and the Teaching and Learning Advisory Committee that are being led under Superintendent Murphy's direction uh, that will really take a look and a lot of the questions uh, that we all have around what schools will look like next year. So we have a, certainly a, a ways to go for that. And tonight's presentation, as best I can, will be uh, around a regular transition to Jordan Jackson. I will certainly work in a few things uh, related to the circumstances of starting the year in the way that we will. Uh, but again, uh, just want to just sort of set the, the stage for a transition to Jordan Jackson as best we can under normal circumstances. So with that, I want to um, transition into our presentation. And I want to um, just acknowledge some staff members that are actually listening in and point your direction to the chat feature that's on the right hand side of your screen. Uh, we'll utilize that feature if you have any questions as we go along. Uh, this team of individuals is gracious enough to uh, volunteer their time to monitor the chat session for me and help to facilitate some of the discussions there. So you may hear some responses uh, depending on what questions you have from these uh, folks. Um, I have Denise DeGrasse, who is our assistant principal. Uh, Ryan Gentili, who will be talking uh, briefly to you. He is a formal special former special educator. He's also the new assistant principal at Robinson Elementary School. And he will be uh, pinch hitting for our assistant special ed director, Nancy Beyer, as she's uh, away for a family event. We also have some third grade teachers uh, on the line, uh, Jennifer Van Tran, Kelly Shevlin, and Kathy Rosati. Very grateful to have uh, their lens and their expertise aboard as well. Uh, from our counseling, representing our counseling staff, we have school psychologist Melissa Foster, Amy Cicilline, and as well as our reading specialist, Meg McCarthy, uh, Patty Coyne, and our math specialist, Suzanne Carey. And finally, our English learner teacher, uh, Mr. Mark Krikorian. Again, want to thank them all for joining in. Uh, I'm the, again, my name is John Rocco. I'm the principal here. Uh, this is wrapping up my fourth year as principal at Jordan Jackson. I myself made the transition from Robinson to Jordan Jackson. Uh, I was a principal and assistant principal at Robinson. And so as a group, you benefit from some of my experience in running these meetings for the last few years. Uh, my first year here, I was very excited to make the transition, made some transition with uh, families as well. And I got into a lot of our school improvement plan and our learning objectives with the families during this presentation. And when I finally wrapped up and stopped the Q for Q&A, one well, of the very first questions was, so that's great, but when does school begin? So we're gonna start with some logistical slides. The bad part about um, you know doing it in this format is that I, I can't hear how bad my jokes bomb, so you may hear more jokes um, you know, be, as a result of that. So um, here you can see some logistical information again around the start of school, end of school. All this information is posted on the website. Uh, I mentioned Denise DeGrasse is on the line. She's one of our assistant principals. We'll be in the process of hiring another one uh, moving forward. And then again, um, filling a position there. So, and then there's Ms. Byer, our assistant director of special education. So speaking of the logistics, I'm not sure how many people out there old enough to remember Mr. Mom, um, but we certainly want to cover some basics around accessing our school uh, for drop-off, pickup, and bus loop. Uh, this is a map, uh, obviously, of uh, overhead map. You can see E Street and the access road uh, to our school. And uh, you'll notice, obviously, Robinson is here. Many of you may be familiar with that. When you take your first immediate left, that is the student drop-off uh, pickup 
lane, if you will, and the uh, next left is reserved for our bus loops in, in the morning. Uh, if you're coming to the visit, so you have uh, access to park here at uh, Robinson, in between Robinson and Jordan Jackson, and then, of course, as you move out uh, on the other side of our building. I uh, just want to just take a moment to point out the crosswalk here. Uh, we do have a number of students that walk and ride bikes to school. Uh, so I had a parent uh, a couple of years ago really brought to my attention in the morning that, uh, you know, it can get unsafe for people crossing there. Um, so uh, you may see me out there from time to time helping to direct traffic as well. It's also a good opportunity for me to interact with the students first thing in the morning. Um, so just want to just call attention to that. Also back here off of Ware Street uh, is our chance drop off and pick up entrance to the back of the school. And uh, I was looking at this overhead map. I'm not sure if anybody ever uh, investigated the crop circles on the baseball field. Uh, moving on to a different view of the school. You can see here there's that uh, student drop off pickup lane. As I mentioned before, there's a crosswalk. Uh, we also have the champs office here, west office, east office entrances um, as well. Uh, as you obviously come into the building, again, knowing that things will be different next year, I just wanted to point out that we have the Raptor system, just as uh, other schools do, and we do have 100% return rate on the licenses that go in there. I told you the stream of bad jokes would be coming. Um, important uh, just to pause a little bit, uh, just to set the theme to the presentation as well. I uh, just want to give everybody an opportunity to read uh, the mission of the Jordan Jackson School. And there's a lot of words that are in there that are extremely important. Um, and I think you'll see that, you know, we certainly want to enrich the life, educational life and social life of your student too, and, and when they come to Jordan Jackson. When I first started as an administrator here, uh, our former superintendent had less than an activity uh, during our summer leadership professional development activities. And it was really to, to sort of just focus on you know, the major things uh, and, and how you want the school and their initiatives to progress. Uh, I took the same question and asked our families during curriculum night to fill in the blank and what we could do if, at Jordan Jackson if we focus on blank, what, how we could improve and make this experience as best that we can for families. Um, these are some words that generally came up over the first couple of years that we did that. And uh, again, I want to call your attention to that as I start the presentation, and focus on, and on a few that are of particular interest to you as, as we go through. And really what starts with is, is supporting students, um, not only making this transition to our school, but also just at this age at the elementary level. And you'll see some overlap too with Robinson. Those of you that have been in the district for a while have heard the term PBIS or positive interventions and supports. Um, you also know school-wide expectations, but a lot of what you'll see on the next couple of slides, really the collaboration between our teachers, our school psychologists, our adjustment counselors, uh, our special educators, support staff, administrators, and it's really just you know embedding all of this in, in our school. Um, you'll see some of the examples of the photos that I show not only uh, teacher generated, but also student as well. Uh, we base a lot of what we do off of the CARES curriculum. Um, our teachers do integrate lessons in the beginning of the year, particularly, um, but also throughout the year uh, related to that acronym that you see on the screen. Uh, and on the far right, uh, you know, something like a, a positive sign Thursday where uh, science greet our students as they walk in the building. And you can see an example of student work there. Again, a sign that, you know, students, you know, signs like this that students make and hang up in our, on our walls, I think say it all. Uh, and you can see, uh, again, how some of that comes out from our teachers as well. Um, and lots of opportunities for our students to socialize uh, in and around our school whenever they are hopefully here. Um, we do use a care card system, um, probably something that we'll adopt virtually next year. You know, just recognizing and, and rewarding students that, uh, you know, exhibit the school-wide expectations whenever teachers see it. It's also a school-wide reward system, um, so that way uh, we can have some school-wide celebrations uh, as opposed to class to class. Uh, for students uh, that teachers want to recognize, uh, it may either go above and beyond or maybe working quietly behind the scenes um, or just do something exceptional for a friend. 
Uh, again, related to that CARES uh, curriculum I had mentioned before, uh, there are the shout outs. Uh, shout outs are uh, students or names are submitted to our office and um, I myself or Mr. Gro Mrs. DeGrasso will read their names over morning announcements. Um, they get a hexagon that is posted on our walls and we like to watch that grow as the uh, year goes on. Uh, this year during the closure, we were able to eventually bring uh, virtual shout outs up and running. Um, so uh, no doubt that we'll be able to continue that as we go forward too. Student voice uh, is very important. Uh, a few years ago, a couple of years ago, I, I piloted a student council. Um, I, every year we get an occasional letter for a uh, child that wanted to run for student president. And when, it's something we certainly had considered here, but really wanted to handle it in, in, in a way where you know, wouldn't result in a popularity contest. It was something that students really wanted to, you know, start to get their um, feet wet and some leadership skills. And I had a couple of uh, uh, girls in the fifth grade who had written to me previously and had a similar idea. And the three of us got to work. And long story short, we're in our third year of the student council. It's been just a tremendous addition to our school. Uh, student, a lot of people think that the principal's voice is the most powerful, but really the student's voice is. Uh, I enjoy working with them. They've gotten to meet with various different adults um, throughout our district. They're the decision makers that are heads of uh, certain departments, also community leaders, and they have had a tremendous input in uh, making some changes in our building, both physical changes as well as procedural changes, changes to the lunch menu, things like that, um, additional uh, votes in consideration on Spirit Day, and uh, you know, just overall uh, holding each other accountable uh, throughout the building uh, for keeping our school in a state in which uh, we will all be very proud. Um, and I also think, shout out for student voice again. I got an email today um, that um, from a student that really made my year uh, because she said I was the best principal ever. So I say that for a couple of reasons. One, because um, it, it's an example of just simply emailing students this year throughout the closure got me closer to some students and, and, and gave me a different form of communication. And then the other reason why is because I'm hoping that Superintendent Murphy is listening so uh, she can put that in my evaluation. Um, moving on, uh, this year we working to uh, pilot a diversity club in our school. And uh, we would have been doing that uh, in the spring had we um, been here physically. Uh, Mark Corian is also on the line, like I mentioned, is our EL teacher. Uh, he and, and I began to um, you know, develop things in, in uh, conjunction to what our school council uh, will be looking forward to getting that up and running. And I can't think of a better time to do that than, than right now. Um, so we will be working towards that for next year, uh, whether we're in person, remote or some combination of the two. Uh, again, focusing on cultural awareness and diversity within our community and building off of those CARES uh, tenants, as I mentioned before. So I want to just turn our attention uh, to uh, the academic uh, section. Um, I want to also, again, I'm not looking at the, the comments as I'm presenting, so I just want to give people the opportunity. If there's anything, any questions or as you have it go along, uh, please put that in the chat. And if there's anything that is common that I can clarify or clear up, then I know that the staff will text me and let me know so I can uh, address that. Uh, but as we move on, I think this is really important, particularly in light of next year. Uh, what we've been doing over the last three years is uh, adopting and building a, on a model um, that we, is commonly known as the workshop model uh, for literacy. And really what it starts with is at the end here, uh, small group individualized instruction. When you look at all the things that we need to accomplish with students, given their various different uh, you know, learning styles, learning abilities, and um, everything that they bring with them as they come through our doors, um, we really need to get to this part as quickly as possible in our classrooms. And we've been doing a lot of work over the last um, several years to be able to uh, bring these, this model on. Uh, and we are fortunate enough to have the tools in, in Fonta Spinell to be able to do that. As you go back to the assessment piece, um, having a powerful assessment tool in which particularly literacy, we're looking at student characteristics. Uh, and those of you obviously have been working with your students at home um, more closely than you thought you ever had, would have, 
uh, probably so you know, noticing um, if, you, if you have multiple children in your family or you're working with different families and their children, uh, that certainly people, uh, each student uh, sees things a little bit differently, but also comprehends in a different way uh, and, and, and connects with text in different ways. And that can be fluid. Um, so uh, th this assessment system is really important to us in general, but it's gonna be extremely important to us next year uh, as we really work to, to, to meet students where they're at and uh, in Robinson uh, Elementary School and ourselves obviously have continued to do a lot of work in terms of transition from academics um, as well. Something that's uh, familiar to you from Robinson is the Envision 2.0 math. Um, same thing with that math program, you know, working to get to that small group instruction and then looking at opportunities uh, in which uh, to really engage students in, in that uh, riching vocabulary of math and understanding um, that, that dialogue and those multi-step uh, problems as well. Uh, at this point, I'm just going to switch my screen and uh, bring Mr. Gentile on board um, so that way he can talk to you a little bit about special education. Thank you, Mr. Narocco. And, and again, a big welcome to all the incoming uh, parents and students uh, that'll be at the JJ next year. Uh, and that includes my daughter, Hannah, who is just wrapping up her, her second grade year at Robinson. Uh, so within our special education model, we support and promote inclusive practices within the least restrictive environment. Through IEP meetings, we work to establish the individualized support needed for each student and design accommodations that will promote their success. Um, placement ensures that the classes that the students in meet their individualized needs. In some of our intensive classrooms, we will have some familiar teachers that will transfer with those students uh, to make that transition a little bit easier for them. Um, we do have an extensive uh, transition process, which officially kind of kicks off in December, but in reality is really ongoing throughout the school year. Uh, jo Jordan Jackson Special Education Teachers meet with their Robinson School counterparts to discuss these transitions. In addition, many grade three special ed uh, teachers have attended grade two IEP meetings to gather more important information uh, needed for a successful transition for all of these students. Also, our school psychologists, counselors, occupational therapists, speech and language therapists, and physical therapists have consulted, attended IEP meetings, and have met virtually through our uh, Google Meet platform. Um, during the school year, we do foster a team-based model that is built on collaboration, consultation, and communication. Collaboration between classroom teachers, special education teachers, and service providers take place on a routine daily basis. Uh, teachers do provide frequent communication home. Again, our goal is for your student to have a successful transition, feel comfortable in school, and develop confidence in their abilities. Jordan Jackson truly does have a fantastic group of grade three teachers, special educators, and service providers. Uh, if you ever have a question at any time or concern, please do not hesitate to contact your child's teacher or special educator. Thank you, Mr. Narocco. Thank you, Mr. Gentile, appreciate you joining us. Uh, I also just wanna take the opportunity at this point too, just to uh, build on what Mr. Gentile was talking about in terms of the transition. Uh, this is one of several meetings uh, in our, uh, behind the scenes that we've you know, we, we uh, developed um, between the two schools, uh, both for parents, uh, students, and uh, for staff. Uh, students, I know, have been engaging in their uh, second grade buddy meetings, uh, so I hope those, are, those have gone well. Uh, we <clears throat> also uh, working together, too, I mentioned student council. I neglected to mention that I asked third grade student council members to submit a short video or picture um, that I could share with your students about what they like about Jordan Jackson. So we'll be putting that together and getting it out to your students through their uh, Google accounts. Uh, and um, also they uh, created a, a little read aloud. I'm not sure if Mr. Sankey was able to share it with the students as well, welcoming into Jordan Jackson. And again, plenty of meeting, meetings between the staff. So uh, I'm just gonna switch back to a presentation and I want to again make another transition into our curriculum and how we've really looked to a number of different things to enhance and enrich our instruction but particularly been gravitating obviously towards uh, STEM uh, and, and I want to just speak to it 
in relation to how it's been integrated throughout our building in different areas and how it will certainly help us as we move forward too and we look at more project-based learning uh, for our students whether in school or remotely or a combination of both uh, you can see uh, you know again when you look at the photos of students you'll see some engagement um, you know with each other uh, this is a was known as a spaghetti tower challenge but it's really uh, some sticks and some uh, modeling clay and they have to support a weight uh, same amount of weight of modeling clay within each group a uh, really great activity we actually did school-wide uh, to celebrate STEM week. Um, here you can see a little a variation on the publishing of a writing piece. Uh, in this case, the writing was a snow monster uh, a piece in fourth grade as part of the finished uh, piece. You can see that this is uh, obviously LED lights. Um, there's also a connector switch here. So this was built off of uh, and, and, and incorporated in the unit of study on circuitry. Uh, for that grade. So ways in which we can combine various forms of our curriculum and engage students are extremely important to us. Um, those of you familiar with the Rube Goldberg Challenge, um, you know, creating a, a series of events, uh, these students working through that here. There's an example of a fifth grade uh, classroom who was reading a story, uh, obviously about the Revolutionary War, this STEM challenge, uh, which is done in our STEM, uh, sorry, our science lab, which I'll talk to in a second. Uh, these students had to work together to uh, keep a tea bag afloat in water uh, for a certain amount of time, obviously without getting wet. Uh, I got a chance to uh, sit in on that as well uh, for a couple of sessions, and it was really fun to see how each group came up with a very different design. Um, this is a, just an example of our uh, pictures from our science lab. I uh, really enjoy this picture up in the, in the top uh, right hand corner um, because uh, a couple of reasons. One, it really shows that um, you know, we are deeply committed to um, professional development and working with our teachers to engage them in the uh, same activities that they would be engaging in their students. The science lab is equipped with lessons. Um, for each grade level and um, and has all the materials that a teacher needs to be able to go in there with their class and 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 do the experiment uh, you can see that this is a erosion uh, this would be an erosion um, uh, lesson that's it's done in our classrooms and um, my fun story about that is uh, trying to explain why we we're ordering so many monopoly houses and uh, hotels um, so really interactive place for our students and uh, really great to see how our teachers light up when they do the activities as well. Um, I'm actually sitting here at school in what's what we affectionately call the innovation station. Um, this is another area where we have some tools to engage students in, in problem-based learning um, and also uh, just going through the design process uh, and creating uh, various different things. You can see as uh, students on the left here, we do have um, motion and uh, motor and um, pulley kits uh, for our Legos. Uh, we've reorganized them in more of a maker format where students can create things on their own. Uh, we do obviously have specific uh, cars that they can make and other uh, uh, objects that they can make. Here on the right hand side, you'll see a, a ramp in which the students, the challenge there is to see how fast you can get up the ramp with a car that you made and then make your modifications from there, change your tires and gears and stuff like that. Uh, here a student has created a game board, uh, Super Mario Brothers using uh, Play-Doh and a Makey Makey um, reinforcing the circuitry piece. And stop animation movies has really been a big hit for our students uh, and our teachers as well. Uh, just to add to the publishing piece of their writing and just engage them in storytelling and uh, also bring out some of their uh, strengths through that process. Uh, wonderful, uh, great uh, STEM activity that all your students will participate in next year is the great uh, third grade pumpkin chuck challenge. Um, we, I will mention the um, garden uh, in a little bit too, and in some years we've actually grown these pumpkins in our garden, in our school garden. Uh, but this is always uh, one of my favorites. I'm not supposed to have favorites around here, but this is definitely one of them. Um, I particularly like this activity because as a principal, safety is of uh, utmost concern for me. So you can see how much we uh, really do pay attention to the safety goggles. Uh, students have a great time with this. Um, it's always a uh, concern too that it, it can get a little competitive, but the students really do handle it very well. Every class has a competition and, the, and then each 
class is represented in the multi-purpose room for the uh, big final uh, pumpkin chuck. So we look forward to that every year. Uh, also something that we've uh, adopted over the last few years is uh, embracing the hour of code uh, and doing it school wide. Uh, you can see this picture of our cafeteria. Um, all these pictures are exciting, but also then obviously a little depressing, not knowing what school's going to look like ne next year. So just uh, bear with me as I choke my way through this because it's just so great to see the students uh, interacting with each other and helping each other. And up in the top right hand uh, side, you can see that, uh, you know, one of the favorite activities is coding the cat and the moose uh, to dance. Uh, so uh, really great to see how many students of various different uh, abilities and uh, learning styles access this and uh, actually do engage with each other, help each other out. We then build off of that uh, here in the innovation station um, with our codable robots, uh, Dash. This is Dash. Um, and the right hand side is actually a maze that was created by a fourth grade class. Sorry, we spent the day going around to fifth grade students yelling and having a celebration, so I'm losing my voice. Um, but you can see Dash <coughs> coding coordinates here and also everybody's favorite basketball. A lot of our teachers um, really utilize green screens and book trailers, much like movie trailers get, get you interested in seeing a movie. A book trailer um, will hopefully get you interested in the book. Um, we're also uh, at Jordan Jackson, some things we do differently than Robinson. Obviously, our students are a little bit older. Participate in a walk to school. Every year, our partnership with Safe Routes to School and the YMCA is phenomenal. Really fun event. This year, we're able to walk from the new uh, security complex on East Street. And uh, we usually walk uh, near the uh, Mansfield Bank there in the center of town as well. So two different locations. And you can see that everybody really gets into the spirit, including uh, the our, our Happy Hornet and uh, our Mansfield High School Hornet. So really exciting day for us as well. Uh, much like Robinson, obviously, we, we uh, same art, uh, special programs. You can see examples of our visual arts, uh, PE, and uh, music. This is a picture of chorus. Uh, students just rehearsing for their chorus, chorus performance. Chorus uh, takes place in fourth and fifth grade. Um, and I also want to put in a plug for CHAMP's uh, fourth and fifth grade instrument program, too. Something to pay attention to as your students progress to those grades. Um, but also, you know, just wanted to let everybody know that obviously students have a full complement of specials. It's an example of uh, how our staff, you know, really works with our students in different ways. Um, this is a sensory walk um, that we have in the building. Gives uh, students an opportunity um, to kind of just slow, slow down, um, think a little bit, just you know, relax, and it's done wonders for me uh, throughout the day. <laughs> Uh, I mentioned the community garden, um, you know, just a really uh, great learning center, uh, one that's uh, extremely valuable to us. And uh, we can't thank people uh, enough for helping us uh, get to this point. And we're looking forward to obviously maintaining it and continuing to uh, grow it, uh, pun intended. Uh, I always like the picture on the far left um, because, uh, you know, it's actually a caterpillar there. But just the, the face and the reaction uh, from the students uh, as they go out there and um, really engage in the hands-on learning. Um, we do obviously uh, grow the plants. Uh, this is a top right, is a picture of our germination station. Um, uh, far left, a retired fifth grade uh, teacher who I have to include in this presentation, uh, Bob Cody, who is a uh, farmer himself, longtime uh, teacher here, as I mentioned, uh, also uh, on the uh, Board of uh, Mass Ag in the classroom is really instrumental in getting us going um, with the garden, supporting us. You can see that we really do use it to make connections all the way through. Um, lettuce that was served on this day was grown in the garden. You can see that we compost uh, here in the back too uh, of it. Um, and we've uh, gone a couple of years too. We've actually composted some of the cafeteria materials, uh, cafeteria waste, food waste, and uh, donate to our local daily bread uh, as well. And so we, uh, we have the garden up and running this year too. I want to thank everybody out there that's helped me and uh, all of us with that. And uh, we're looking forward to when we can uh, make our donation later on this year. 
this is an example of uh, just how we make connections outside um, our well, outside of our borders. Um, a couple of years ago, our fifth grade students do a global read aloud every year. And that's the same uh, book that fifth graders around the country are reading. And they participate in a lot of engaging conversations with those classrooms uh, around the country. And this year they read a book called uh, Long Walk to Water. This is a, a, a story about, uh, you know, the, the in Sudan, the lack of water. And, and one story is about two characters. Um, it's about a girl, uh, Naya, who has to make uh, the trip from her village uh, to get water. It's a two hour trip and she has to take it twice a day. Um, and also uh, the other character, uh, the person in the story is uh, Salva, who is here on the right hand side, who in the 80s um, was uh, a refugee um, looking for a better place for families to live and enduring uh, all that he had to uh, just to survive. The story obviously touched us in a lot of different ways. We partnered with Misa and our students did a walk around our softball and uh, varsity, uh, junior varsity baseball fields, carrying gallons of water. And thanks to the generosity of everybody in our community, we raised enough money as a school to sponsor a well in South Sudan. So we're very proud of that. Um, and again, even though that was a couple of years ago, it, it does say a lot about our school, but also our community uh, and how compassionate uh, everybody is. And, and uh, once an idea gets rolling, um, it really does go, can go a long way. So uh, I mentioned Misa a couple of times. This is just a you know slide um, that they that they have provided in years past uh, that I wanted to just put out to you as a parent myself. Uh, we're all proud card carrying members of Misa, and, and this is a great way to see how our uh, money is and your money uh, and your time and your efforts uh, go to good use. I won't, even though we're they're not here to see it. Uh, they just recently helped us uh, to uh, improve our multi-purpose room by adding a, a sound system, a microphone, lapel microphones, wireless microphones, uh, and some chorus ones too. Uh, so we're really excited once we do have students back uh, to utilize that space now and, and, and finally have, you know, have an opportunity for, for some good sound for our students. Um, particularly for third grade, Misa, one of the great events is uh, when New England Aquarium comes in and, and talks about the title ad ad adaptations. Uh, and so you can see how hands on and how much fun that is for our third grade students. Uh, field day uh, is a big uh, change for a lot of students when they do come. We just had our virtual field day uh, this week and that was a lot of fun. But on the real field day, this uh, jumpy house really gets a lot of attention, obstacle course. Uh, and that's a change I know from Robinson as well that students really like. Um, just some ways to get in touch with us and, and stay updated. Uh, we, like all the other schools, we send out our newsletter. Uh, this is the Jordan Jackson news you can use. Uh, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and uh, obviously our website. Uh, we do post our morning announcements on our website. It's a little bit further down on, on the screen than I, I showed here. Uh, you can see there's some of the school hours and information there. There's a calendar of events similar to other schools. You'll, you'll see a pretty streamlined approach throughout the Mansfield school system. And then you obviously have a link to the district calendar. So uh, a couple of you know, things that I wanted to just show you there. Uh, yeah, this is the most important. Your students, are, you just love the fact that when they come over to third grade, they can get ice cream for snack. Uh, so you, you, you ask any third grader, that's probably going to be one of their biggest uh, reasons why you should come to Jordan Jackson. So um, having gone through all that, uh, I just wanted to just come back to our mission statement, just, uh, you know, just reflection about hopefully what you saw, you know, really does, um, you know, get at the heart of a lot of what we're trying to accomplish. There's so much more I certainly could have included. Um, and, you know, again, I just want to, you know, uh, thank you all for joining us. Give me a second as I switch back. Um, and, you know, again, I... and, okay, thanks. Let me get this big screen here. So uh, I just want to thank everybody for joining us. And, uh, you know, again, lots of questions that we'll have to answer. I see a couple of questions about, you know, next year and being and doing things virtually. Uh, all things that we'll certainly be working through uh, over the summer and getting ready for September. 
So again, thank you very much for your time. I know this is uh, getting to be a busy uh, time of the year now that schedules are getting up and running. Uh, appreciate everybody viewing in. Uh, and if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to email me or call the schools and uh, happy to chat. Take care and we look forward to seeing your students next year.